krockfootball.com.au. The coach's catch-up continues. We'll head down to Central Reserve in Colac to speak with their coach, Paul Lynch. Paul, thanks for joining us. Season 2014, not too far away now. And as per usual, Colac just trying to sail under the radar, but not doing so successfully because we know that you've been fairly active in the recruiting stakes. Yeah, we have. We've recruited well this year. We've endeavoured to get all the good kids back to Colac and... I think other than probably uh, Jace McNamara that's still at Ballarat, we've pretty much got every good kid back at Collett this year. So um, we will lose Linton and Learson for periods of the year, so that counteracts it a little bit. But, yeah, we have recruited pretty well. Just on James and Kane, you must be wrapped, though, that they're getting an opportunity at the next level after the, the, the years they've had. Yeah, they both had really good years last year and they're both really, um, really good football people. So obviously very driven to where they want to be. So I hope they both do well. For those who haven't caught up, would they give us the names that have, that have come back that are, are going to strengthen Colac in 2014? Uh, I suppose, obviously, the two Dare boys. Obviously, uh, Levi being a ruckman and Joey, obviously, being a midfield centre-half back sort of type player. Uh, Jared Garner's come back from Torquay. Um, Marcus Crooks has come back from Ainsley. Um, he'll be very good for us. Um, Tapper Buchanan, Mike Buchanan's come back from, obviously, playing up in Queensland and playing at uh, Beulah last year. Um, Jared Garner from Torquay and there's a host of district kids um, Jake O'Dwyer, Sean Smart um, a few others so. Will you get access to Merrick Buchanan if not needed by Werribee? Yeah, I'm not really sure what's going to happen there I think if they don't play seniors they play in their development squad so I don't think they get to play any games so there'll be only one or two if you can so I have spoke to Merrick but his main goal is to get a, to get a game at Werribee so fingers crossed Last year, you, you came with a rush at the end of the season. You had five teams ahead of you looking nervously over their shoulders, hoping that Colac didn't sneak fifth spot because we think you would have done some damage. Is that, that the feeling that, uh, yeah, obviously, first half of the season disappointing, but uh, a missed opportunity? Yeah, it is. It's a good way to finish off, I suppose. And we were playing a very, very good brand of footy towards the end of there. They probably took five or six weeks to develop the game plan that I was looking at. Um, sometimes form can be overlooked at a little bit. And I think that, you know, how good were we? Or, you know, did we just get on a bit of a roll? And um, obviously playing the second half down here a lot probably helped us as well. So not sure what, where the form stacks up yet, but um, we'll soon find out very shortly. Central Reserve's in the process of getting a, a much-needed upgrade. Take us through what, what's taken place here and what visiting clubs can expect when they get down here during 2014. Yeah, it's obviously um, an amazing surface now. They've spent over 800000 on the surface alone, so um, I think the next part starts towards the end of this year where they start developing the grandstand and all that. So it'll be, I'll be a, probably a long time gone before it finishes, but it's going to be an amazing setup by the time it's all done, so it's going to be a really good place to be at. But... Um, yeah, clubs coming down there, always look forward now. They used to hate coming down here because they had that big glue pot in the middle, but now it's uh, she's no cricket, no nothing. She's purely a football oval, so it's always going to be in good nick. Talking about the start of the season, Lara in round one, followed by Geelong West St Peter's. You obviously get the, the break on the second weekend because of the Good Friday game, and then South Bowen and St Mary's, I think, to, to round out your opening month. I'm not sure exactly of the order, but obviously a, a tough month. A couple of finalists in there, St Mary's, who are going to be much improved, and, and West obviously will be keen to win at home on Good Friday. Yeah, sort of Lara and West a little bit unknown again. We don't really know what they're recruiting. Um, obviously, I talk to Scar a little bit, so I know what South are doing, and uh, I know I live pretty much over the road from uh, St Mary's coach, so I know what they're doing. But, yeah, all four are going to be tough, and we play South Bowen down here, so that'll be a real challenge for us, and we'll have a fair indication how we're travelling after we play them. South Bowen have a pretty good record over the years down here, don't they? They don't mind. <laughs> they're one of the few clubs who don't mind seeing the draw and say, oh, we've got one of the, the trips to Colac this year. Yeah, they are. They're a very good side, and you know, having a look at their ins again, they've recruited very well. They've lost a couple, but they've recruited well again. But they're the benchmark by about, I reckon, eight goals, and the rest of the club's got to try to catch up to them. You always have a couple of kids who bob up that uh, we don't know a lot about. Who are we going to keep an eye out for this year? Who's who's been uh, burning up the tracks, so to speak, through preseason? Uh, young Brody Finn. Um, he's uh, he's played in the kids last year. Played a couple of senior games the year before, I think, and probably just wanted to stay in the kids last year and just have a go there. Um, we had two intra clubs, and he kicked, I think, seven and eight goals in both intra clubs. So he's six foot three or four, and he's a real good kid. And he's obviously having tools like Carmody and Veal around to teach him. He's going to be a very good player for the future. What have you done practice match-wise? Uh, I believe you had a couple of games. I think you played Geelong Amateur in one of them. Yeah, I played Geelong Amateurs on the weekend. They were very good. Um, they uh, really tested us, and we were looking for that real defensive opposition, and they were really good at it, especially the first half. And the week before, we played Ballarat Swans, who, um, yeah, we won pretty easy, but that was a good guess scrap too. 
no more before the season, give the players a week off? No, we're playing another one. We decided to play straight through since we got that second week off. So we play uh, Ballarat City up in Ballarat this week. So um, I think a few of the older ones will have the week off. But, yeah, because we got that second week, it was a bit sort of cloudy what we do, whether we have the week off and then have another week off. So we decided to play straight through and have the week off then. And how's Paul Lynch moving at age 40? Paul Lynch doesn't get much on the track now. He's uh, done a bit of running in pre-season, but, um, yeah, he's very old and very sore. Mate, we appreciate your time. Thanks for having us down at uh, what is going to be a wonderful facility as it gets redeveloped over time. And uh, I think the surface is a credit to everybody who's put uh, hard work into it, having a quick look at it. And uh, I think uh, clubs coming down will thoroughly enjoy playing down here for once in a while. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. Paul Lynch there joining us on the Coaches Catch-Up, carrockfootball.com.au.